One of my favorite exercises for building strong athletic hamstrings. Part one of the exercise, I'm just gonna come in a cable machine. I have a fabric mini band or you could go an ankle strap, thigh almost parallel. So I wanna really isolate the hamstrings as knee flexors, not as hip extensors. So I'm coming into hip flexion, thigh almost parallel to the floor. And then from there, I'm just going through my full range of motion. I can get full knee extension to full knee flexion, okay? This is the first part of the exercise. I wanna get about an eight out of 10 burn in the hamstring. Second part of the exercise, and it is important that you're holding on to something. I don't want balance to be the limiting factor. Second part of the exercise, I usually go down a little bit for this one. Same position, and now eccentrically, I'm letting that cable pull my shin forward, and then as I'm getting towards the extension, I start to extend the hip. So now this is very similar to sprinting, we're even training that overstride position a little bit, and this is where a lot of the hamstring strains happen. And so I'm here, and I just let it pull, and then I strike down and back. So now I am working the hamstrings as hip extensors, but I'm feeling a lot of glute. Now the biggest mistake that I see people make is to get this hip extension, they fly into lumbar hyperextension. If you work out and your lower back is more sore than your glutes, or you always feel like you got a lower back pump, there's a very good chance that every time you're going to extend the hip, it's not true hip extension, it's lumbar hyperextension. And so one, we're kind of risking injury and we're risking pain in the, in the erector muscles. But two, the glutes are so powerful, the hamstrings are powerful, we wanna be using these to extend the hip, right? So again, I'm here, let it pull, explode back. Now in the durability code, we have a level two which everything is faster. So I'd actually go a little bit lighter on the machine and now I'm going maximal speed. So boom, explode, come back to this starting position, explode, come back to that starting position. Now, part one and part two can be separated. So these could be separate exercises. This first one is just a great exercise for healing. If you're looking for uh, improved knee health, if you're looking for stronger hamstrings, we can always do this one right, by itself. You don't necessarily have to do part two. In the durability code, I put them together because I actually like to pre-fatigue the hamstrings with this version, and then while we're fatigued, we go in to this version. Because especially in basketball, a lot of hamstring strain happen in that fatigued state. So sometimes it's good to get a little bit of fatigues, kind of a pre-fatigue set, and then put them through those ranges that they're gonna be going through in sprinting. Now we can get similar benefits in a seated hamstring curl because look, a seated hamstring curl, I'm at 90 degrees of hip flexion and then I come in to knee extension. So what do we get? We get maximal length in the hamstrings. So that's good if we're looking for just general strength. There is some unique benefits to this compared to uh, the seated hamstring curl. One, I'm using a PJF fabric mini band or a ankle strap, and so I can get rotation of the knee. Remember, the knees aren't really just a true hinge. They don't just go like this. They actually rotate to bend, right? Screw home mechanism. I need internal rotation or external rotation at all times in order to bend or extend the knee. And so what we're getting here, you'll notice when I get towards full extension, naturally the toe is gonna point out a little bit, the heel is gonna point in a little bit, because to extend the knee in the open chain, we call it, that, that's foot off the ground, to extend the knee, I need some tibial external rotation. To flex the knee, I need tibial internal rotation. So here I'm heel in, and then as I pull, I'm heel away, right? So now I'm actually getting those rotational components in the knee, I'm working that pop lydius muscle that doesn't get worked a lot to unlock initially from this fully locked position. The gastroc, the calf, the pop lydius will work to unlock and then the hamstrings will gain leverage to pull the rest of the way. But the point I'm trying to make is sometimes in a machine, you're locked in to one position and we can't get the same rotational components in the knee. So if we're looking for some knee health, I like to do it here on a cable so that we can really get those internal, external rotations. Guys, look, just hold your thigh, don't let it move. External, internal. We have to have those motions for optimal knee health, right? The knees don't just bend, they rotate in order to bend. So that's just a long way of explaining the side benefit of doing it 
in a cable machine compared to doing it in a regular seated hamstring machine. And then the other thing is we're getting forces across the pelvis, right? I'm standing on one leg. So this is a working leg. So as I'm working here, the balance is not the limiting factor, but as I'm working here, I have forces coming across the pelvis. So I'm training all these little pelvic muscles that really are some of the most important muscles for keeping us healthy. And we don't get that in a seated position. We're really just isolating the hamstrings. So not that that's bad. That's a great way to build some general strength, especially at longer muscle lengths. But I prefer this one a lot more for most athletes who are looking for injury reduction and overall performance.